Good morning, everyone. I want to say thank you to ICT for helping out in the Eastern Cape uh, last semester. Um, they did a great job because I was busy with a conference and I couldn't attend to the students in Eastern Cape, but they did quite a wonderful job and um, I'm glad they were there. Um, I teach the ICT in education for the BEAT Honours course in Faculty of Education and I've been doing this course for quite a number of years and I've been through all the uh, LMS platforms since um, they started uh, with Q, um, the e-learning and then they went on to e-teaching and now they've asked me to, to come on board into e -Canva. Now I just want to concentrate on one of the tools that's, that's been, been used on the e-learning platform and that is the discussion forum. Now discussion forums is an online forum, is an online e or e-learning platform that allows students to post messages to the discussion threads, interact, receive feedback from other students and the instructor or lecturer, and foster deeper understandings towards the subjects and the study. Now, the students that I have are from, some of them from rural areas, some of them are mostly from the urban, yeah, in, in, in the Western Cape. And some of them have to travel quite a distance on, on a Wednesday evening to attend this um, honors course. So sometimes I was known as a virtual class. And they're very happy about that because that means they don't have to come to campus. Um, they do the, the, the module online, providing that they have internet access. So, luckily for the e-learning that we have, sorry, uh, the forum tool allowed the lecturer or site leader, that's a person that's involved with uh, setting up um, the LMS, an unlimited num a number of discussion forums and this can be integrated closely with other tools such as, now there's a resource tool that's also on, on the Canva and then a great book. Now I haven't used much the great book, but I believe uh, it's, it's there for, to put, um, if you assess your students and you put some marks on it. Okay. Now some key features of the tool um, is um, obviously the, the forum or topics. Uh, a forum is a mandatory ca category or grouping for topics. Now the topics which are created within a forum are where participants can post conversations. Uh, a forum within the name of the site and a topic that is normally titled uh, general discussions are created as a default. Now the conversation is the thread of messages in which participants post their contributions. Um, the conversation can be created by instructors or the, even the students inside on the, on the topic. Now, there's also the option of uh, the grading option. Um, interaction can be assigned a point value and sent to the gradebook with comments. Now, sometimes when you mark uh, the work and you write comments on there, you can also do this on your discussion forum. Um, the posts are on your site <coughs> normally appears on the, on the home page. Okay, and this can be clicked on the, on the menu bar. Um, but I'll show you later on how it looks. You can also um, see the many unread messages that sometimes students don't read what others were supposed to read. And um, post, post and, uh, and a message up, up, up forum appears on there under the MySpace. And there you can see your, the, my, the, the workspace sorry, is, is where you see all, all the information. Some other key features, email. You can email the student um, if you don't want them to see, the others to see what you said to them, you can email a specific participant by just clicking on email. Okay. Now staff members can elect to receive an email or no email. Notifications are for all new posts in the site or notification for responses to conversations they posted. The default is always to receive um, postings when you email it to them. Okay. Uh, composing the messages, you can use a rich text interface uh, to allow to um, either use plain text and or you can use HTML and you can also add attachments to the specific topic or specific um, question you pose. Um, you can also inclu include quoted text by using the insert original text option. Okay, And then the good thing about this is statistics. You can check to see what was done 
throughout uh, the whole discussion forum. The home statistics are available for site owners to determine the participation level of individual participants. You can also read all of particular participants' postings using this feature. Um, there are some settings. Okay, you can also set up um, your discussion forum to your, to your liking. This will enable participants to submit a post to a, to a topic before they have permission to read the responses or, of others. You can also set up group um, postings. A site list can change forum and topic settings in accommodation with predefined groups to allow or deny access to specific discussion groups, uh, discussions per group. Um, a direct link to individual messages. Site leaders can copy a direct link to individual messages to use elsewhere. And the email feature is, uh, site leaders can directly email the, the, the author of a posting from which in the, of the forum tool. Then also on there is the help if you're stuck and you can just click on the help and you'll get um, all the necessary uh, assistance. Now, this is how it looks on, the, um, on in Canva. I uh, just hope it's connected to the, to the site. I'll just log in. Okay, it's logging in. Okay, I'm in. Um, now, this B707, that's the first semester module called uh, 707, and the second semester one is now called B8708. Um, the discussion forum. Now, when you start um, the discussion forum, it will ask you to create a new forum. And you if you click on new forum, it will create that for you. And then, um, you can look at statistics if you have done uh, a forum. If you click on there, it will show you all the students that have done the um, discussion. And then um, you can click on each individual student and see what they've done. Okay. Now, it gives the date of the subject okay, and how many times they've responded to others. Even the word count for each and every um, message they have responded. Okay. Um, if you want to see what they have all typed, you can just expand all of it. You can either view just a topic, or you can, if you go back, let me just go back, you can also view the actual message content. And these are all the messages. The question was posed um, to them on about the use of social media in, in the school environment. And these were all the, what they said about. Now, I think this is to do with somebody was trying to put or paste a Word document. <laughs> <laughs> and it, as you can see, the <laughs> and then I think below that, they actually just said something, OK? <laughs> But as you can see, there is an email function where you can email directly to that student if you want to correspond with that student. Okay. And you can also delete the messages if you don't want the message to appear. Okay. Um, and if you have a lot of contributions, you can also go to the very first message. Because what I normally do is, I, when I have the virtual class, I, I notify them through the announcement or through the email that I'm going to have the virtual class during a window period of between three or four days. So the Monday, I open it up for them. And by the Thursday, I close the window for them so they can't access again. So um, that's basically when, when I do the virtual classes. And then you can also, if you want, you can print all of this and do the old fashioned way of creating the stuff, print it out on paper, using your red pen and go <laughs> through the stuff. Or you can, you know, you just do it online and grade it using the grade function uh, on, on, this, on this tool. Okay. okay, now some students are at the beach, like um, Judith has said, they may be sitting in the, in the lecture theaters or in the libraries or at home or somewhere in the cars. 
and then they access the discussion forums. And I've checked on some of the dates. Some of them are working like late in the evening. Um, I sometimes use my phone, my BlackBerry phone, and um, luckily I'm nearsighted, so I don't have a problem with very small fonts. Um, so I, I go through the stuff, read through it, and then um, respond immediately. And then sometimes, you know, I use my tablet also, but in most cases at, in the office, I will use uh, my desktop machine. So these are the different views you can use. Um, it's best actually to use the desktop version because you can see most of the stuff on the screen. Now, uh, this is what some of the students said about using it com uh, compared to using the e-teaching or the e-learning. So at the beginning of the course, many of them were struggling to log on. Uh, I think that was the major problem when we started off beginning of the year. It's, um, students, you know, many of them don't use the group-wise email accounts. They use Gmail and they use Yahoo Mails, and then they struggle uh, to log in onto Ikamba or any, any other uh, university um, access. And then some other features were not on, on, the, on the tool itself, there were some features that they couldn't understand. Um, and they had to figure it out afterwards. They actually enjoyed the fast response when using this platform compared to using the, the e-teaching one. <coughs> the speed is much, much, much faster. Uh, and then they, they prefer this in, in using e-teaching. They actually liked communicating with their peers using this method instead of discussing things in class. They will rather communicate. And I've noticed, if I look at the list, many of the students are, are the ones that are very quiet in class. But on here, I could see that they, they actually said a lot of things instead of saying it in class. Um, so they were also very favorable of using virtual classes instead of coming to, class, to campus. Thank you. <laughs> Period, what right. would you handle that because you are not there for those who, don't, who doesn't have uh, internet access? So how did you handle You see, um, they, they normally care afterwards, they will come to me and tell me or let me know somehow, they will email me. If they can email me, it means they do have access. <laughs> so uh, we, we, what we will do is we'll give him some, some grace period to do this, to go back and I'll open up the window again, I'll open up the, the time period for them to go and respond to what the others, because the task was for them to answer the question and respond to three other uh, students in the class. And then, um, you know, so what I'll do is try and figure out why they couldn't have access, give them access, and then they can like um, do it again over a certain period. Yes, in, in a normal face-to-face -face lecture, you see the students for one hour, two hours, but with this, you seem to be busy with them for three to four days. <laughs> yeah, I, I give, I give them, I give them that that that, that freeway because um, remember, not they can't get access at every day at that time, you know. So certain periods, many students don't have access to the internet. They'll either come to the labs, they will come to the lab where I'm busy, but I won't be there, but some of the student assistants will be there. Or they'll come to the library and use internet access in the library. Some of them will even use their phones, or some of them will use um, internet cafe or so, or the, the neighbor's computer. I understand you correctly that this is just one of your methods, and it's not the only one to, to communicate with students when you conduct your methods. We, I sometimes also do chats, but that's um, a live chat. But then I'll use, and I'll also use Facebook. And what I've discovered with Facebook is you get quicker responses on Facebook because they're always on Facebook. And uh, I had one student that never came to class, one of my other classes. I couldn't find him anywhere. He always bunks classes. But then I went on Facebook. Where's the guy? <laughs> I just gave him one warning, <laughs> one warning in. And he came to class and submitted all these other assignments. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you mentioned the grading. Did you do the grading of the discussions? No, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't done the grading yet. The next phase is to go and do analysis of what they said. Um, and I'm hoping to get the software that I can, you know, 
yeah, they can t track and do things and do word counting, except the words that they, uh, but certain things that do qualitative analysis. There are some software that can do that. Instead of you going reading through all of the stuff, you can have a software that can actually go through all the text and you know and, and give you some some um, of the, of that. For the, for the undergrad, we don't have much of a problem because they come from the schools already with the technology. They should be born with the technology. So um, it's, it's, the, it's the postgrad students and the post postgrads that I'm dealing with are teachers that have been in the profession for 20, 30 years. And you can't just, you know, let some come to the course and not others. Uh, so the first semester, the first term, it's always doing introduction level just to get them on par because when they go back to the schools, those learners the way much more than what they know about uh, technology, mm -hmm. even their own children also. So what, what I do is, you know, I try to just to, to narrow the gap and get them on par. But um, I've been told by some other colleagues to, you know, people should by now know how to use all this stuff. I said, but that's not the case. You can see some people come from rural areas and never seen a tablet you know, or a laptop. So we have to have that like, like a bitching period for them to get on par. Okay. So on your mention that um, you also use Facebooks and other methods of mm -hmm. communicating with them, I just want to find out how, were there any challenges in terms of reconciling uh, what the student, individual student participation is, because I guess it's also about that. So that's the only way you would measure their participation. So would you be able to reconcile all these technologies to actually come out with the individual student performance? Look, the, the reason why I used the social media was because it's a trend, okay? Everybody uses social media and, and, and it's a tool. And um, you actually investigating, should we allow it in schools? And that's why I pose that question for this, to the students. Um, but having all these, we have to expose, expose them to all of these. And, and most of those teachers are middle-aged ladies. Okay, so, uh, and, and they feel very proud. I, I, I like to empower them with, with the knowledge that when they leave at the end of, of, of doing the beard honors, they are fully comfortable in using the technologies. And um, yeah, that, that's why I do it. Okay. If I can just link to the previous question, um, like Hassan said, we are aware that some people can't even switch a computer on, we know that. So we also offer very basic literacy skills. We have a digital academic literacy program where the departments actually contact us. Students are taught Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Do you know some students don't know how to even respond to an email sometimes? They are taught how to submit an assignment. So we appeal to the lecturers to come on board. They just assume that everybody can use the tools. So uh, we are asking for the infusion of technology, and you know. So Hassan's students, this was not the, the journey where they started, you know what I mean? But it's our, I think it's our duty. These students come to UWC, they think everybody's online, because we even have it on the web, e-learning. So they come here expecting to be engaged in technology, and it's not the case. Many of the lecturers just refuse to do anything but stay there in the lecture. So we caught between those two, and, and things are moving fast. But we do not just dump tools. We had YouTube training. I said to the team, you know what? You assume that a lecturer knows how to download a YouTube video. Do you know how many lecturers came for that hour uh, training, um, Kimal and uh, Tipopo here? We don't only teach them how to download. If you want something on social constructivism, these thousands of YouTubers. We teach you how to take of it, merge it, 
and put it into a package to teach. So everybody's using the jargon, looking cool, the tablets, the iPads, but people don't know how to use the tools. It's, it's admitting. So we say, don't be shy, come and learn how to use the iPad, learn how to use the tools, and don't assume that that child, he can mix it, he can WhatsApp, but we know they can't engage in the community of practice. So let's stop calling it the digital, how do you say it? The, the new digital age. Yes, we know. But people need support. And some people are shy to say, I do not know how to download a YouTube. So please look at, we send all the um, emails to you, we invite you for training, and yet there's some people that say, how come she's doing it and I'm not? But then it's her colleague that's been with her in the department for so long and we're getting that reaction. But we're giving the same invites to the entire campus. Thank you, Hassan. Can I just say one thing? Um, the director for curriculum came to visit us uh, from WCD, um, Brian Schroeder, and they came um, with a vision for, for schools. They're going to equip the schools with each learner with a tablet and for each teacher with a tablet or, or, or a laptop. Now, if they're going to give that to all the learners, all the high schools, and primary schools in Western Cape, are our teachers ready for that? So that's why they came here. Yeah, they want to prepare our teachers to be ready when they go into the schools in 2015. Yeah. They're going to also have wireless or Wi-Fi available to all the schools and government buildings. So, you know, we get, you have to get on par, otherwise you're going to be left out. But thank you very much. Thank you, sir.